solar storms impact SpaceX Starlink. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, all kinds of really good tech. Today is going to be a SpaceX Starlink day. We're gonna be talking about the current solar storms that are happening. And I've read about three, four, five articles all about this. And a lot of them are like chicken little, you know how this stuff goes. A lot of them also are very negative to Elon Musk. And I just threw a couple of these together. I wanna to read it to you just so you get an idea of what is going on. And then I'll give you the truth and the fiction behind these things. With a lot of times you really need to take these articles with a grain of salt. And that's what I do here on this channel. I make it so that you really don't have to read all of these. I will read them for you and then I'll give you my commentary and then hopefully hear from you down below because it's not just about me, it's about you down here in the community. I wanna know what you think about all of this. So once again, I'm gonna go through all these and I'll give you my thoughts. And before we get into any of this, I just want to say that if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. That's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this notification button here so when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. If you want to give back to the channel, there's a little thanks button down there. You can click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And at the end of this video, not now, I'll put a little link right about here. About 500 videos have put together about SpaceX Starlink if you're interested. A whole playlist just for you. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, and of course, what to buy, what not to buy, and the why behind all of it. This channel is always about the what, not the what, the why. Solar storms impact SpaceX Starlink satellites. Solar storms are making waves and SpaceX Starlink constellation is feeling the effects. Reports highlight how geomagnetic storms triggered by the sun's 11 year solar cycle are impacting low earth orbit satellites. These storms heat up the atmosphere, causing it to expand and increase drag, which can pull satellites like SpaceX Starlink's orbiting at 550 kilometers out of their intended paths, leading to premature atmospheric re-entry. I'm gonna get into all of that. It's true, but that's not exactly what is going on. And I'll tell you before the end of this video. A bump in the road for SpaceX Starlink. A NASA study led by Denny Oliveira underscores the issue, noting that solar storms can disrupt satellite operations. In 2022, a single storm caused 38 Starlink satellites to plummet. And I talked to you guys about that in 2022. Go back to some of those videos. And in 2024, a six pound piece of debris landed on a Canadian farm. We also did a story about that. With over 7,500 satellites in orbit and plans for up to 42,000, SpaceX faces a challenge. Recent exposts mention a G4 geomagnetic storm with a planetary K index of eight prompting SpaceX to adjust satellite positions to counter drag, showing proactive management. All right, so what the heck is this G4 geomagnetic storm and what is this K, planetary K index, right? Because if you don't have context, you read this stuff and it sounds just absolutely ridiculous. So of course that's what I'm here for. Now this G4 geomagnetic storm index, it goes from a G1 to a G5. So this being a G4, let's do this. I'm a hurricane kind of guy. We're in Florida, we get hit all the time. They go from cat one to cat five. So this goes from G1 to G5. So let's just make believe this is a hurricane. This is a category four hurricane. So it's not small. So minor would be a G1 and extreme or catastrophic would be a G5. This is a G4, they call it severe. All right, so you get an idea of how big the storm is. Also this K index, this planetary K index of eight, what does that mean? Well, it starts at one and it goes all the way up to nine nine being extreme. So this is considered severe, a severe storm, which would be K8. So once again, let's call it a cat four hurricane. So this is very important going forward because then we get an idea of what mitigations have been done and what really needs to be done. What is the implications of this? Anyways, it continues beyond the orbit 
broader impacts. The stakes go beyond SpaceX Starlink's network. Re-entering satellites release aluminum oxide, which could affect the ozone layer. I'm sorry, guys. Every time I hear about this ozone stuff, it just makes me chuckle. Anyways, sorry. Though evidence of significant harm is limited. I'm glad that they put that little caveat in there because normally it's like chicken little and it's affecting the ozone layer. And then people that are reading these articles are like, oh, satellite burned up. Well, you know what? Ozone is gone. We're dead. I'm glad. Kudos to them for doing that. Debris reaching Earth, while rare, raises safety concerns. One incident doesn't make a trend, but it is a reminder of the risks. As solar activity peaks, these storms may increase, possibly impacting SpaceX Starlink's worldwide internet reliability. SpaceX's playbook for resilience. This isn't a new problem for the space industry. Crowded orbits and solar activity have long been challenges, and SpaceX is adapting. The company is exploring higher orbits to reduce drag, keep that in mind, and leveraging advanced forecasting from NOAA to predict storms. With thousands of satellites launched successfully, SpaceX's redundancy ensures the network remains robust despite occasional losses. That's actually true. Nature versus tech, a familiar battle. Solar storms highlight the tug of war between human innovation and cosmic forces. While these pose a hurdle, SpaceX's track record suggests they're well equipped to handle it. This story is less about crisis and more about the growing pains of a revolutionary network. That is true. As the space industry evolves, expect more solutions to keep connectivity soaring. I agree with that 100%. They are constantly changing. They're evolving, making things better and understanding these solar storms that happen, these geomagnetic storms and what to do and what not to do. So, number one, at the top of this piece, when they said the company is exploring higher orbits to reduce drag and leveraging blah, 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 that is absolutely untrue. They're not trying to leverage these higher orbits. They're not trying to look into or explore higher orbits. Contrary to that, they're exploring lower orbits. Matter of fact, they just got released to have their satellite sitting in the 300 range. So instead of 550 kilometers, 320, 330 kilometers, much closer. So that portion of this article is false. Once again, read it all and take it all with a grain of salt because some is fact and some is fallacy and that's what I'm here for. To give you my commentary and of course, point out what is actually truth and what is not. Now, math doesn't lie, physics doesn't lie, and what I usually do is I do math, right? I do the math and see what is actually real and what is not, what is possible and what is not. Now, I dug into this a little bit deeper. I did the math like, I always do here. And what I found was the storm that is currently impacting the satellites that are on orbit, this storm, this cat for hurricane, let's call it, of a storm. Well, the impact would be 10 days, 10 day reduction in the lifespan of these satellites, 10 days. And out of five years, which is the estimated lifespan of a SpaceX Starlink satellite, which is right around what, 1800 and change, 1825 days for the five years, 10 day reduction due to this cat four hurricane of a geomagnetic storm, 10 days, that is it, which comes to 0.55% reduction, less than half of a percent reduction due to this one storm. So as you can see, when you hear these things and you, you read these articles, if you don't dig in and actually do the math, you're thinking that once again, the sky is falling. Literally, the satellites are falling and the ozone layer is going to be gone also. And we're all just going to die of solar radiation. And it's not the case. Once again, this massive storm, it's a pretty damn big storm, obviously. Cat four, like I call it, right? which is a G4, let's, as they say, or a K index of eight, which would be like the equivalent to a Cat 4 hurricane, it is still not that big a deal. Now, that being said, it is a big deal if you're trying to put new satellites on orbit. 
And that's what we talked about in 2022. And to kind of bring this back around, basically what ended up happening then was 38 satellites were trying to be placed on orbit. Now, when they do this, they launch the satellites and they come into, let's say about, let's call it 200, 220 kilometers, somewhere right on there. Then they use their propulsion system to push them out to a operational altitude which was 550, 530 kilometers. So once again, it goes from 200 plus kilometers up to 500. Well, if a geomagnetic or a real, let's say strong, like this Cat 4 solar storm hits, well, it is going to increase, let's say the pressure on those satellites. It heats up the atmosphere. It makes it more dense, more heavy. It's harder for the propulsion system on those satellites to push it to its operational height or altitude. And that is where the problems lie. It doesn't affect the satellites that are currently on orbit because they're at an altitude that the atmospheric drag is not going to affect it more than 0.55% a half of a percent. Once again, reducing its duration or its life cycle from 1,825 days down to 1,815 days. That's doing the math. So like I said, it doesn't make that much of a difference to the satellites that are on orbit, but the satellites that are being placed there, it makes a massive difference. And that's why SpaceX Starlink is together with NOAA to make sure that they know when these solar storms are happening because they don't want to have satellites sitting at 200, 250 kilometers being pushed back by these solar winds or the geomagnetic storms, once again, heating up the atmosphere because they're not gonna have enough propulsion to get them to the altitude they need to get to and they're gonna burn up like they did once again in 2022. But as you noticed, since then, it's never happened again, right? So they learn from this. So anyways, I hope you found this interesting. I always love reading these articles and kind of just dissecting them a little bit. And if you enjoy it, like I said before, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Even more importantly, share this channel, share the video with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever you frequent. That would be very helpful to grow the channel. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of my merch, my tees, my shirts, my books, and everything else over there. See if there's something you like. Pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, hopefully with SpaceX Starlink, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.